I'm floating right. There we go. Okay, we're on the air, and it's we are? Thursday the 12th. Yes, we are. And we're doing the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Part 2, also known as the Second Fundamental Theorem. There are several fundamental theorems. You know one already, the one about finding area under a uh, curve using antiderivatives, right? But I don't think you know the second one. Here it is. Let me just remind you that you know the first fundamental theorem. By the way, there are a lot of fundamental theorems of calculus. The next five or so have to do with AP Physics C electromechanics, Whoa, proving Maxwell's laws. But we digress. Like we're not, so we're not going to do those. No, we're not doing those. All right, so here's the fundamental theorem of calculus part one, or the first fundamental theorem, some people call it. This is the one you know already. Now let's just write it down. If f of x is continuous for all x on the interval from a to b, okay, and cap f prime of x is little f, what does that mean? The antiderivative of f is f. Okay, so remember when you, when you check an antiderivative, you differentiate it, see if you start, got what you started with, right? So cap f is the antiderivative of little f, that's all I'm saying. Then, the area from a to b under little f is cap f of b minus cap f of a. And this is the way we've been finding areas all week, even with, when we're using the program and whatnot. Notice the curve has to be continuous so that the area is bounded. All righty. I don't know if we made a big deal about that yet, but there it is. All right, so we know that. But what's the second fundamental theorem that comes in handy too? We're going to need it. All right, here it is. You ready? Can I move on? Now, you can look all these up in the book, by the way, but assuming you read the book, that would be nice. Uh, when you assume... All right, second fundamental theorem of calculus, or, sec or fundamental theorem of calculus part two. This is probably new, all right? Here it is. If, it starts the same. If f of x is a continuous function for all x on the interval from a to b, and we define cap f of x as the integral from some constant a to x of f of t dt, then the derivative of this function, cap f prime, is simply the composition of f of t with x, which may not be obvious, and it comes in handy. So we should, we're going to talk about this today, OK? Now, you know differential equations, right? An equation with a derivative in it. In it. Yeah, I said it. I said it uh, correctly. All right. And how do you solve differential equations? You integrate, right? You variable separate. You integrate both sides. But, right, OK. But sometimes you have an integral equation instead, an equation with an integral in it. You can define a function as the area from, let's say, 0 to x under this curve. So it measures area, all right? It's what's called an accumulator function. It accumulates area as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger. The question is, what's the derivative of that function? I don't know. That's not obvious, but we're going to make it obvious. Here's an example. I'm going to show you w that this is true, OK, with some examples that you can do easily. And then we can do it when it's not easy. Ah, here we go. So let's say cap f of x is, in fact, this constant to x under this curve, the parabola, right, t squared. OK, now, I'm not going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus part two. I'm going to use part one. Can you anti-differentiate this? Can you, get, can you tell me what cap f of x actually is? Well, what's the antiderivative of t squared dt? t cubed over 3. And the fundamental theorem part one says plug in x and plug in 0, right? So what do you get? What do you plug in first? Zero. Well, it's cap f of b minus cap f of a, right? I'm doing fundamental theorem part one. So it's going to be x cubed over 3 minus 0 cubed over 3, which is a 0, right? It doesn't have to be 0. This could be some other constant. This could, might not be 0, whatever. 
That's not the point. The point is, now can you tell me the derivative of f? What's cap f prime? Well, whatever this is, it's a constant. The derivative of the constant is always zero. zero. OK, what's the derivative of this with respect to x? How do you differentiate x cubed? You take the 3 and put it in front, and then you do what with the 3? Subtract 1 from it, right? So it's 3x squared over 3 is just x squared. Isn't that the composition of t squared with x? Yes. Just plug in x. That's all the fundamental theorem of calculus part 2 says. That's it. OK? So you don't have to do all of this work. If you need the derivative of cap f, just compose. You can skip all of this stuff. And usually, you're going to want to skip this stuff because a lot of times what you have here is something you don't know the integral of. So you don't need to know the integral of it, the antiderivative. OK? All right, here's another example just to show you what the rule is saying. OK? Now, again, let's go back to the fundamental theorem part two. Right? The derivative of this is compose f of t with x. Just plug in x where you see t. That's it. Right? That's basically what we did. We plugged in x where we saw t, and we got the derivative, OK? All right, now this is obvious because we could get the function cap f. Sometimes it's not obvious. All right, how about this one? What if cap f of x is the integral from negative pi to x under the curve cosine t dt? Now, the t is just a dummy variable. It could be any variable as long as it's different from this. All right, this, these variables match. These variables match, OK? So let's do it the old-fashioned way. Do you know the antiderivative of cosine? Well, the derivative of the cosine is negative sine. So it's sine, OK. So sine of t evaluated from negative pi to x. So what do you plug in first? x. So you get sine of x minus what? Sine of negative pi, OK. Now, pi, remember, is, is 180 degrees. Negative pi is also 180 degrees, right? The sine of 180 degrees is what? It happens to be zero. It doesn't have to be, but it is probably a constant. Now, remember what we're asking. The fundamental theorem of calculus part two is talking about the derivative of that creature, the derivative of this. Now, according to the rule is what? All you do is what? Plug in the x where you see t, and you should get what? Plug in x, we see t, what do you get? Cosine x, that's it. Is that what you get? What's the derivative of a constant? Zero. What's the derivative of the, co of the sine? There you go. OK? That's not obvious, unless you do fundamental theorem of part one and then differentiate what you get. OK, but that's a lot of work. You don't need to do that. You can go straight from here to here. All righty. OK. OK, try this one on for size. How about this? I don't know if you remember this one. This came up in the last review sheet, I think it was, the last review test. Cap f of x, let's say it's the integral from 0 to x under the curve 1 over 1 plus t squared dt. OK? Now, if you, if you want to do this by the fundamental theorem, Number one, wait, number one. Well, no, I'm saying, I'm using number one to show that number two makes sense. You don't have to do number one. All right, what does number two say? What's, if I want the derivative of this, what do I do? That's what we're going to get. Okay, good. But I'm just going to demonstrate that that's true using fundamental theorem one. Okay? Fundamental theorem one says, take the antiderivative of this to find f, take the antiderivative of this, plug in x, plug in zero, and subtract, right? But do you remember the antiderivative of this? It came up on the last review sheet. I don't know if we made a big deal about it. We have no, it doesn't work like that. No, 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 it doesn't work that way. This isn't one that you can do by u sub. I, I don't know if you recall, but um, we did the area, I think, from, what the heck was it? From 0 to 1 or something. And we did a convergence table. And we got pi over 4, I think it was. And then I said, what if you multiply it by 4, what do you get? You get pi. Do you remember that one? That presupposes that, this, that the antiderivative of this is the area from 0 to 1 gives you pi over 4. You don't, re don't remember. OK, fine, you don't remember. Uh, we haven't proven it, so I, it's not surprising. But the antiderivative of this creature is arctan. 
And we, yeah, it came up sort of in passing in one of the review sheets. I think the derivative of arc 10 turned out to be this or something. All right, so if you don't remember, that's fine. But I'm going to write it down. I'm going to say, okay, it's the arc 10, the inverse function of 10, evaluated from, we're at 10 minutes already? From 0 to x. And so you get, well, yeah, can I do it? Okay, arc 10 of x minus arc 10 of 0. This is a constant. And then the derivative of this is this. which is what you would expect. Because the antiderivative is this, or the derivative is that. Okay, bye YouTube, see you later. Bye bye.